Jupiter, but one sent for Jupiter, and they also have a role in Jupiter 8. I'm going to explain about the process of saving patch data that's stored within the Jupiter 8 to cassette tape. Another option you have to saving to cassette tape is the original patch data sheets. Here's what they look like. Not sure how well the camera can focus, but this is all the information that you would need to fill out to save your patches. There's two per sheet. It's always good to have several copies. Also another helpful thing is to have a front panel layout printed out. And this also has the back side, which is all the the jacks and switches and all, so that you know where everything is. Especially if you have a a uh, tiered stand like this one here where you can't really get back behind there or if you have a wall in the way like I do. Alright. I happen to know where this the jack is on the back of here so I just plugged it in. All we need is a quarter inch line with a eighth inch jack on the other end. So a quarter, two eighth. The Jupiter 8 will take the quarter inch uh, jack and the cassette player will take the eighth inch. If your tape machine does have a quarter inch, then you would obviously use a standard quarter inch line. Alright. So we'd actually go to the back of the Jupiter and plug that in to the tape save jack. Loading is for when you're loading from the tape machine. Saving is when you're saving to the tape machine. We have our cassette player here. The level has already been set. I'm going to press pause for now and record and pause so that it's not moving. I have a freshly opened cassette tape there. And I'll go ahead and plug this in. And we should start hearing some sound. There we go. What I normally do when it does that, I'll just will stop the tape, and right before I tell the Jupiter to save, I'll go ahead and start that cassette player up. And it should be at a decent level, so that when you save or load back into the Jupiter 8, that it's loud enough. Uh, it should be at the RDB if possible. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and start recording, and I will send the data over. And we shall hear the lovely ones and zeros going across. Alright. And we'll press save. There it goes. So that was the pilot tone that we just heard. It's a leading tone. And we're hearing a series of pulses. And each patch will scroll across the display, signifying that it's been saved. And it will go through every uh, patch that there is, 11 through 88. Kind of an interesting sound, because uh, each one had a different collection of pulses. The higher tones are the ones, and the lower tones are the zeros in our patch data. That one there actually sounded quite different. So at the time of saving the information, you can't play the keyboard, obviously. And it's not recommended to touch it either. And it's best to have a high quality tape if possible. So that when it comes time to send the data over to the Jupiter that is in decent quality. We should be soon hearing the ending pilot tone. Very soon. About now. There we are. Alright. 
and we shall stop our cassette tape and take the wire out of there. And Jupiter 8 will return to its normal functioning status. These LEDs over here will start flashing again. And it'll be in a playable mode now. And we'll just switch patches and so on. Alright.